What's going on, people? Welcome back to the opposition preview as we look ahead to a massive game for Palace. We'll see if there's also a big game for Bournemouth as we face Bournemouth at Sellers Park. And it's right before all the difficult fixtures. I'm joined by Sam Davis from the AFCB podcast, back of the net, not nest. <laughs> people always get confused, YouTube channel as well. Um, Sam, look, great having you on here. And we, we've done a little preview for your channel as well right before this. And I'll be honest, we'll talk about the season so far, but as a Bournemouth fan, when you're looking at Palace and seeing our recent form, our home form that you talked about on, on your show, how are you feeling ahead of this game? Are you looking at this game thinking, we could go get a, get a win against Palace? Yeah, I've got a feeling we're, we're certainly more buoyant than we have been in, in previous seasons. That's got to be said. I think that obviously home form isn't particularly great at the moment. Mm. Uh you know, away from home, I think, you know, you are better than you are at home. But um, yeah, you what, you won one game. That's that 3-2 against Wolves where Wolves probably could have got something from that game. Yeah. Um, I know you've had a couple of goalless draws and stuff against Fulham and Nottingham Forest, but you could maybe caveat that by saying some of your defeats have been against Arsenal and Spurs, but then the, the defeat against Everton at home, yeah. not particularly great. I don't know. We feel as though we're on an up to it on an upward trajectory at the moment. And it feels like we're playing Palace at a time when they could be susceptible. So, look, we're hopeful of getting something, maybe not a win, but uh, we'd be satisfied with a point. But um, may maybe we could get more, I don't know. Yeah, let's talk about your season so far then. Um, you've been, I don't know if you can agree or disagree with me, but I, I feel like if you look at where you are on the table, um, recently you have improved, but I, I, I'll say your start of the season has been a bit of a struggle. Um, you brought in another manager, um, left Gary O'Neill behind. He, of yeah. course, he went to Wolves. But as a fan, how would you describe your start to the season so far? Are you satisfied with the change of things, the style of football, with how everything's going? Yeah, I mean, the outward world thought it was harsh. There were people like Gary Lineker calling it ludicrous and stuff. And I, yeah, maybe you can understand that. I think when it comes to an English manager, they're always going to be more loyal than, you know, just another foreign name that's going to come into yeah. the game. So I can understand it on their part. Um, Gary Neal, by the way, pleased for him for doing like relatively well at Wolves so far. And there's no bitterness as Bournemouth fans are concerned. But the footballs are to watch at times last season. And Andoni Iriola... Mm -hmm. Has come in, um, got some really good experience in La Liga. Sometimes that doesn't always translate, but it's taken time to do so here. When we saw the run of fixtures at the start of the season, it was it was tough, really tough. We had some hard games, and we were looking at the first like six or seven games, thinking, oh, you know, we'd be lucky if we're not in the bottom three. We weren't. We were like sixteenth mm. or seventeenth, and we then played a couple of games like against Wolves and Everton games that we think, okay, so these are the winnable ones. Let's now see what we can do. We were awful in them. We were awful. But then things have started to click and it was a, it was a two, one winner home against Burnley. And now things are starting to happen. But now in the last four games, four or five, we've been exceptional. Uh, we are, we are registering more shots than ever before. It's free flowing. It's attacking. There's plenty of width. There's direct running. It's what he likes to call rock and roll football. It's a bit chaotic at times, but it's exciting to watch. And as Bournemouth fans, we're actually turning up to Dean Court every week now thinking this is good to watch. This is a spectacle. So we're actually feeling very buoyant at the moment. And now under our new manager, we're thinking, well, Gary O'Neill, with all due respect, I think he had a ceiling of where he could take mm -hmm. us. We don't know what the ceiling could be under Iriola and it could be higher than, you know, even we think. So, yeah, really exciting times. You know what? I think that's a very good point that you made and I'll get your thoughts on Palace as well. But as Palace fans, I mean, there's a divide between a fan base as well, saying maybe this is all we can do as a, as a team. And some people are saying we should be aiming more. But despite you struggling, what made me fascinated is that the fact that you still enjoyed the whole process of trying to play that exciting football in terms of like for palace fans that haven't watched Bournemouth what can we really expect what is rock and roll football it just sounds a bit chaotic but what exactly is it yeah I mean it's um it's mixing up between playing it out from the back the nice tippy tappy stuff but then you know long balls finding the channels you've got your high pressing full backs loads of overlapping runs he's got a definitive style but we like to high press you'll f I mean hopefully we'll do that 
um, against you guys. But I'm really interested to know how you tactically you'll set up because we played better against the footballing sides. We outfootballed Newcastle. You could say that they were weak, but then mm. you saw them turn over Man United and draw Paris Saint Germain and smash Chelsea with almost the same side, Isaac mm. aside. So we did really well against them and against Villa, we outplayed them as well. So against you guys, not too sure, but yeah, lots of overlapping, high pressing, transitioning fast, trying to capitalise on errors, but just plenty of work rate as well. And just um, really intense football, which means around 60 minutes, you'll probably see a few substitutions being made as we need to you know, change it up to keep the energy flowing. But um, yeah, really interesting to watch and uh, plenty of shots on goal at the moment, which is something I think some stat of, you know, registering 57 shots in our last like three or four games. I can't remember if it's three or four, excuse me, but yeah, we, um, we're a spectacle again and that, you know, that's all Bournemouth fans really want. We, we were, we were, Treated to some good stuff under Eddie Howe, and then when he left, it's it's been it's been a hard watch since. But this is the sort of closest we've come to getting back to that way of football. Now, looking at the other side of things, Palace, <laughs> not rock and roll football. <laughs> if I had to pick an instrument, I don't know. It's it's like a flute. Um, it's just there's nothing special about flute. I don't know. No offense to anyone who plays a flute, but um, that's how I describe Palace. It's like, I mean, we we've seen it before. We hear it often. And it's nothing really exciting, to be fair. Um, we're probably going to be playing a mid or low block, trying to hit you on a counter attack. For for you know Bournemouth fans hearing that, do you, is it time to get excited? Because I know certain teams do struggle against a mid block, low block. Has Bournemouth mm. been one of those teams this season? Uh, you could say, I mean, certainly at the start of the season, but then against Sheffield United, we pretty much faced that and we tore them apart. It was a 3-1 win at Bramble Lane, but it should have been mm. so much more than that. So, no, we don't struggle at that. But that said, your players are a different level to what Sheffield United are. So, it's going to be an interesting battle. I'm really interested to see the midfield battle. Jefferson Lerma, like, I'll be interested yeah. to see him again up against Kirk Christie. Probably Billing's going to come in, I would expect. But yeah, um, I'm intrigued to see whether we whether we can break you down. But um, I don't know. It's one of these games where it could go either way. And that sounds a stupid thing to say. Mm. But I don't know. Like We just have to be on it. I think our style relies on high concentration levels like throughout and we haven't really got anything to put, you know, if we, like if we switch off, we can be punished. That happened against Everton where they battered us three nil. So um, you've got to hope you play us when we're not at our high levels, but I'm not talking like we're Man City or anything because we're not, yeah. we're Bournemouth. We know who we are, but you know, the football is being played at the moment is really exciting. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that we can turn you over, but, like I say, happy with the point. Yeah, what do you make of Roy Hodgson coming back to Palace as a neutral? Um, the decision of him staying on, and now there's talks about whether he should get you know sacked or not from the mm. fan base. I think from the board level, I don't think they've reached that point, but potentially based on reports, if the form continues as it is in January, then discussions could be had. Um, are you surprised that we brought back Roy Hodgson? I just, I just kind of wonder, like what what the project is. Like you look at other clubs and you can see that they've got um, young, hungry managers or or ones that have got um, a kind of expansive style of football that can take you to, you know, levels higher than where they are. For instance, mm. I don't know, Brentford or whatever under like Thomas Frank and stuff. He's done a superb job with them. and But you know that if he has the resources, then he can take it on to new levels. I just don't think Roy Hodgson's got that man, um, is that man to take you on to new levels therefore as a project um i'm not really sure where you're going i mean under patrick vieira i think that's what it was but obviously you know results certainly didn't go his way so i can understand why he was given the boot but yeah i I was fairly skeptical but what he does do is you know it goes without saying he brings experience but he brings a steeliness to the side um Mm. and sometimes it you know, it goes back to basics with him a little bit, which is, you know, sometimes quite a good thing. Um, but in terms of taking you to the next level, I'm, I'm not too sure. So I don't really know from an, from an outside perspective what kind of club sort of Crystal Palace is at the moment. I don't think a lot of us, it's not only you, I think Palace fans are a bit confused as well. And that's why yeah. there's a lot of talks about the, the ownership model and also the manager himself, because yeah. it's a bit confusing. I mean, we want to focus on youth. We've built new academy facilities, but we've got a manager who doesn't like to play the youth. So yeah. it doesn't make sense. It's like, why would you hire a manager 
who doesn't like to play the youth for one season if that's what you want. So you know what? It's it's funny that you said that it's it's um it's not clear what Palace want to do because as Palace fans, um that's what we're saying as well. I guess we want to build a new stand and be sustainable like that. Yeah. Um, but apart from the new stand, it's just a bit confusing because the new stand is not going to be built till what 2026, 2027. Right, so what yeah. happens from here onwards? Um, that's going to be what 15 years in the Premier League, and we're still a bit confused on what to do. I, look, it's a fair point. It's a fair point that you make. But let's talk about some players. You mentioned Je- Jefferson Lerma. How excited are you? You did talk about him facing a few, you know, of your um, old squad uh, members there. Um, mm. You know what to expect from him. But um, do you think that? You know, you you got enough to stop him as well, based on his strengths and weaknesses, or is your midfield complete this season? Uh, we we haven't got a complete midfield. I mean, we 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 would have, uh, you know, based on the injuries that we've had, we've been crying out for a player like Jefferson Lerma for for most of this season. It's only recently when results have been sort of much better that. We've not really mentioned his name as much, but um, he's that kind of tenacious, tough tackling player. He just he just like holds the ball like really well, spreads it out wide. Often does the simple things. Sometimes gets forward with the odd header or two at goal. But we just found him such a hard worker. He covers a lot of ground, and we with, with Tyler Adams, who is our sort of new signing that's been out injured and Alex Scott from Bristol City, young prospect. He's now out for quite a while. We haven't really had a player to fulfill that position but what we have done is almost stumbled across it with Ryan Christie who's been with us for a long time but he's been played a bit higher up the pitch he's come back and partnered Lewis Cook as mm. those two kind of you know double pivot almost and he's done really well there but I, I think it's going to be a really intriguing game because it, Jefferson Lerma knows the game of Lewis Cook, Phil Billing, Ryan Christie but we know him as well so yeah. We'll also know how to get under his skin as well because he, he has got a temperament. I'm surprised he's not been sent off this season. I did see he got a yellow <laughs> card, you know, the other week. He got so many yellow cards for us. It was unbelievable. But sometimes you need that, like, shithouser in your side. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I'm really intrigued to see how it goes. But we love him. We love him. Like, we'll be cheering his name. Um, I haven't got yeah. a bad word to say about him. So who should we watch out for in terms of players? Who's been on form recently for Bournemouth? As you said, you've mm. you've slowly try, you know, been picking up more points. Um, your performances are adding up to it. Who's been leading you to them points that we need to try to stop? Yeah, I could. I mean, obviously, it would be very easy for me to say Dom Solanke, which you know you would. He scored seven this season, more than what he did last season put together. I think a lot of that is down to the fact that he just feels a little pressure. A little less pressure now. The pressure's not on him to be the main sort of goal scorer, and we're chipping him from all different sides. I think one of the steals for us was Antoine Semenyo from Bristol City. He was plays on the left side. He's super. He's he's direct. He's you know he's a bully. He runs at defenders. He can get up and score. And I think if Dom Solanke was ever maybe injured, I think he would probably be the person to play in that role. But on the other side. Marcus Tavernier as well, who I think is absolutely excellent for us too. Um, and then at the back, we've got we've got a number of um, sort of you know, def- like Ilya Zabani, that's uh, you know Ukrainian. Um, he's like highly rated on like Football Manager and stuff like that, and, like you know on FIFA. But One that's the football manager. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's translating into the Premier League as well. He's absolutely superb. He's the only player to have played every minute of every game, along with Dom Solanke. He's strong um, and he knows how to read the game well for such a young head as well. So um, yeah, he's um, we now feel as though we've got a solid spine throughout the whole side, but those are, those are a few names to look out for, for sure. Mm. Let's talk about your strengths and weaknesses. As you said, you know, you're not the final, um, you haven't reached the final level of where you want to be. If Palace want to get a result, how do we go ahead and, and, and get that? What, what are the weaknesses that we should be targeting? Um, I think set pieces, um, you know, defensively, I don't think we've been as good as we'll have wanted to be. I think with the way we play with our high fullbacks, then sometimes we we can be susceptible on the transition, especially if you, you know, transition fast. Um, I would say, yeah, those are, those are probably the main two. And also, I mean, I would have said it up until recently, but Neto, our keeper, he, he has had a few howlers. But recently, thankfully, he's managed to sort his head out or whatever it is that was preventing him from putting in some good performances. But, you know, set pieces especially, you know, whack as many balls in the box as you can and, um, you know, test our defence because that's probably where we are sort of most 
susceptible, really, like any free kicks, any corners. And I assume your strengths are in attack based on the stat that you gave us about 50 shots in the last yeah. three games, which sounds scary. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, and you know, I didn't I didn't want to mention him too much, but Dom Solanke is a is a different player, I think. I think, like I say, as the as the main provider of goals last season, I think he had this the sort of weight um around his neck somewhat. But now with other players chipping in, he he looks a better player for it. He doesn't have to come back as much and, you know, collect the ball. He's pivotal to our style, but um he's he's more of a poacher now. And I, I would really like to see a player like him and who are at the start of his Bournemouth career, like everyone was saying 20 million down the drain, which yeah, I can, I can fully see why that is, but I, I'd like to see him score like 15, maybe 20 this season. 20 is maybe wow. a bit optimistic, but I'd love to see him reach those levels. And I think he can. Mm. Yeah. Let's talk about score predictions now. <laughs> this is, this is the right. most exciting part of the show, of course. Um, yeah. <laughs> as you said, it, I, I, honestly, it's so hard to call this game because, I think it depends on both sides. I mean, who turns up? Well, Palace, I, we've got it in us to, you know, to beat Bournemouth, but I think yeah. Bournemouth have as well. I, it, it depends on how much we want it. And um, against West Ham, we got a positive result. It was a draw, um, something to build on. And this game is not going to be any easier. I'm genuinely worried about this game. But for you as a Bournemouth fan, Sam, so surely you, you have to back your boys. Yeah, I do back them. Uh, and that's based on the good feeling that we've had uh, recently. I mean, we've, you know, we obviously we capitulate the Man City. But other than that, our last four games have been absolutely brilliant. Our last four or five. Um, I, I would say that I think we could we could get a win. We could, uh, we could get a win. Um, I've gone for 2-1 for Bournemouth for this one. Uh that's that's probably with my heart more than my head. My head says a one all will be absolutely fine. Mm. Um, but like I say, it could swing either way. But obviously, I've got to go for a win. So yeah, two one Bournemouth for me. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to go for one all. Um, I just, I just don't. I don't know. I just haven't seen from Palace enough, especially in attack, for us to go and win. Um, I mm. think your strengths in terms of an attack, I, I, I think it'll be struggle to even clean sheet, even though. Finally, our defence did improve against West Ham, which was a positive, even though we didn't have a clean sheet. Um, but yeah, I, I think it'll be a struggle. And I'll be honest, as a Palace fan, based on our form and based on the games coming up, I don't think 1-0 is enough. Um, yeah, I wish wow. we be ideally looking to win, but I think it's going to be a struggle based on um, your recent form and how you've been improving um, gradually. But let us know what you think in the comment section down below. If you have enjoyed this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and make sure to check out Back of the Net. The link will be in the description down below. Thank you to Sam and every single one of his watches. And until next time, up the pants.